For the Houston Astros, it's game three of the four-game series in Cleveland. The Strohs and Indians have split the first two games at Progressive Field. Tonight, Dan Straley makes his second start in a Houston uniform as he opposes the Tribe's Trevor Bauer. Hi, everybody. Alan Ashby and Jeff Blum with you. Last night, the Astros take one on the chin, and it is all even. Uh, they also got a nice pitching performance out of Vince Velasquez last night, and yet he gets sent to the minor leagues. Talk about that, what's going on with the team. Well, first of all, Vince Velasquez did a great job. Fastball, slider, changeup looked great, but he's going down because he's not going to pitch uh, before the All-Star break. So they have a chance to send him down, create some openings on that roster. Oberholtz is going to make that start on Thursday, which we'll see, but it's nothing against him. He's going to be back for sure. I think he's going to be a main cog in that uh, post-All-Star break rotation. So Obi goes tomorrow night. It's Dan Straley tonight, and and uh, the rotation now sets up something like this. Yeah, Britt Oberholzer is going to sneak in there, get that Thursday start here in Cleveland for that getaway game. P numbers are actually pretty good. That 2-1 and one kind of fumbled things when he went up there against New York Yankees. But I think that the way the seasons or the All-Star break is going to finish out with McHugh, Keuchel, and McCullers could finish real strong with these guys leading into that All-Star break where they will probably end up in first place. Dan Straley makes his st second start now with the team. The first one came in Boston, and it was part of a victory, but the numbers weren't all that pretty for Dan. Yeah, it took a lot of pitches. The Boston Red Sox in that series actually put together some great at-bats against Astros pitching, but you can see the seven strikeouts for Dan Straley was pretty good. That slider for him was quite effective, and he's almost a 50-50 guy between that fastball and slider that he has in his repertoire. Coming up, Dan Straley will have to cool off Michael Brantley and David Murphy, who did just enough last night to power Cleveland to a 2-0 win. Can Straley give the offense a chance to roll the Indians? We'll find out in just a few minutes. By Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare right now at southwest.com. And brought to you by HEB. No store does more than my HEB. Coming up, Jose Altuve and Carlos Correa are the usual suspects when the Astros offense is raking. But an unlikely dynamic duel has emerged on this road trip. Julia introduces us to Houston's new batch brothers when we return.
set for game three of this four game set and the Astros offense looking to bounce back today against Trevor Bauer. They struggled last night against the reigning Cy Young Award winner Corey Kluber. But we have seen some offense throughout this entire lineup. But there are a couple of guys who have been consistent on this particular road trip. It started in Boston. It's our Yellowwood bringing the lumber and we're looking at Evan Gaddis and Preston Tucker. Evan Gaddis on this road trip hitting 400. He's come up with some big hits driving in the runs like he's been doing lately. He leads the team with 51 RBIs right now. Feeling really good having some really quality at bats. Got two hits last night when the when the hits were hard to come by for this entire Astros team. And then Preston Tucker, who struggled recently, has really turned things around. You see him on the road trip. A couple of big hits in Boston for him, 348 on this roadie. And then a big game for him in the first game of this series in Cleveland. Here it is, his fifth home run of the year came in that game. But he had four hits on his 25th birthday, a big night. But A.J. Hinch really likes to see this type of production in the lineup, and he's hoping it continues good to get these two guys going in particular. It's just, it's just not a, a good road trip for these guys. They've actually, it's gone on for some time, especially Evan Gaddis in the last 40. He's hitting 310. He's really getting that batting average up. The home runs haven't been so consistent, but quality at best for him. And then you see the last eight for Preston Tucker. And for more on this, I've turned it up to Alan Ashby and Jeff Blum. But first, I want to say happy birthday to Ash. I didn't tell you earlier on purpose because I wanted to tell you right now. Well, thank you so much, Julia. I appreciate it. Yeah, these uh, these birthdays are enjoyable, but um, they could wait a little longer to come around now, year by year. But again, thank you so much. And yes, Evan Gaddis and Preston Tucker have been really nice to watch here on this road trip. Evan Gaddis for a lengthy period, eight-game hitting streak. And like Julia says, leading the team in RBIs. And Preston Tucker has really started to light it up. Could have had another extra base hit last night, but for a great play in center. Yeah, Michael Bourne robbed him, but these guys are swinging the bats nicely. Preston Tucker spraying the ball all over the ballpark, going to left field quite a bit, which is a good sign for hitters. Means they're seeing the ball, letting it get deep. Really no panic in the swing, but Evan Gaddis is just an RBI machine, and he he has a serious disdain for uh, little white <laughs> baseballs, and he takes it out on, on that thing as often as he can. Two hits in last night's game, two the night before. In the eight game hitting streak, he has had four multi hit games. So he's tearing it up pretty well and getting good, consistent swings. Tonight's Astro starting lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. And that lineup has Jose Altuve in the top spot. He'll be followed by Preston Tucker and Carlos Correa. Middle three in the order, Evan Gaddis, he's the DH. Colby Rasmus in left, and at first base, Chris Carter. And the bottom three, Marwin Gonzalez, been playing well. Doing the catching, Jason Castro, and the slick center fielder, Jake Marisnik, that's night. On the mound for the Cleveland Indians that will be facing that Astros lineup, there he is, Trevor Bauer, originally drafted by the Arizona Diamondbacks, got traded over here to Cleveland where he's flourished, making his 17th start this season. Got a winning record. It means he's getting some run support. He's a tough guy to go up against because he carries around a plethora of pitches. Change up, curveball, fastball, slider, splitter. Throws the fastball about 60% of the time, but he uses that to get ahead early so he can work to those other pitches. Likes that change up against left-handed hitters. Really good 12-6 breaking ball. And how about this? The Astros have yet to get a hit off him this season. He threw six innings in Houston, did not give up a hit, struck out. 11 in that game while walking five. Like Plummer says, he really does have good stuff. His last time out picking up a win at P Pittsburgh over the Pirates, six and a third innings, and needed just 74 pitches in that game. So he can serve things well. He had lost two before that. When Jose Altuve trying to get hot again, had a 14 game hitting streak snapped, and now tries to start another. Jose Altuve, seven homers on the year. He's driven in 36. He will start at second base for the American League All-Star squad. It's two balls and no strikes. Calling balls and strikes tonight. Paul Nauert at first base. Ed Hickox. Mike Estabrook is at second and down at third. Dana DeMuth, he's the crew chief. 3-0 and as Bauer falls immediately behind. He walked just one, not only in the last start, but in his last two starts. One against Pittsburgh, one at Baltimore. It's now three and one. Seems to be just getting the ball and going, but the Astros 
trying to lay off all those wrinkles that he does have in that right arm. Hit, all, hit that fastball when you get it. Hits it sharply. That finds the hole on the left side. Jose Altuve on a 3-1 fastball. Gets the first hit of the night. He's on board for Preston Tucker. Trevor Bauer pitching in college was consistently around 95 miles an hour. Seems to have taken a little bit off. Pitching between 91, 93 miles an hour. Altuve a little bit quick. You hear that bat snap. Goes down a hero. Altuve and that speed aboard leads the American League in stolen bases, as do the Astros as a club. Preston Tucker, Julia talked about it, has been hot. And he's not just a guy who picks up some singles when he gets hot. He drives the baseball. 14 doubles. Yet to triple. And five home runs, 21 ribbies for Preston. So on paper, it's a tough one tonight with Trevor Bauer seven and five against Dan Straley looking for his first decision on the season. 771 the ERA for Dan. 0 and 2 the count. Sixty seven degrees in Cleveland. It was warm yesterday. Then the storm came in last evening. The temperature dropped and it has stayed in the 60s. I believe throughout the day today. It is cool. John Gomes the catcher sliding in and out. Carlos Correa waits on deck. Chance to see the breaking ball. You see the two fingers put down by Gomes. That breaking ball in the dirt, enough for Altuve to take off for second, oh, and God. he'll make it. Did you see that? I don't like that. The we block, of, block of the bag. Yeah, there. I'm not a fan. That's not what you do, middle infielders. You get a talking to right there. Kind of one of those unspoken things where you just don't lay the knee down in front because when Altuve dives in there head first, I mean that's nothing but hands and. All kinds of wrong waiting to happen. But Altuve, he's such a consummate gentleman and sportsman out there. Watch him get up. He's like, oh, my bad. That's my bad. Sorry about that. Me, I would have gone on feet first and tried to make it hurt. That's probably why I don't have any friends. But but like a, a feet first gentleman, though. <laughs> that's a wild pitch. Altuve in scoring position. Well, that's close. That was a good pitch. Well, we saw a fastball earlier in the count to get to 0-2. Kind of generous off the edge. We'll look at the strike zone presented by MD Anderson. But right on that inside corner. Good yeah. call. Better be hacking on that pitch. Two and two. Breaking ball got him. One that stayed up in the strike zone. First out. And it brings up Carlos Correa. Tough pitch when you see the spin you're probably anticipating the nasty one this one just hangs up. Not Bowers best breaking ball but still effective. Sometimes those bad breaking balls can leave you swinging through them though. It's a pretty good list of my good effectiveness with the fastball. <laughs> Is that a message right there, or is that just welcome to the big leagues? Poor command. It was a good look from Super Mo. It's brought to you by Mattress Firm on that breaking ball. Almost looked as you watch Trevor Bauer. He almost didn't finish it. Kind of let it go out of his hand and just kind of held that arm out there. Didn't really yank down on it. Don't know what breaking ball that was supposed to be. The rotation was pretty funky. No, he didn't get over the top on it. The fastball fouled off. What? Teams have been doing with Carlos Correa here in the last week, trying to pitch him hard in. And he's had a number of at bats where he's simply gotten tied up. He's human. Somewhat, but he is a very special human. Seven home runs already, 19 RBIs. And you'd say for the moment he's struggling. He can break out of that in a hurry. One and two. 
Yeah, but for whatever reason here in Cleveland, he's having a tough time with that inside pitch. We saw his hot zones, and we've seen it previously coming into this series. That inside corner, they tried to test him, and he would absolutely crush it. But maybe, well, that might be why. A little bit off that inside corner. But that's been the book here recently on Carlos, and I would imagine he's going to have to show some, not only pitchers, but some scouts that he can turn that around quickly once again. Well, that's what I remember as a rookie coming up. A lot of pitchers trying to beat me with the heater, and a lot of them trying to beat me in. As soon as you prove that that kitchen's closed, then they start going to other stuff. That pitch was just a bit low as Altuve picks up a stolen base of third. Can't believe he laid off that one. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, takes a good eye to lay off that thing. Great jump from Altuve. Yeah, I don't know what led to that pitch in that location, but it certainly made it easy for Altuve to pick up stolen base number 25. And now the infield draws in. And again, a very poor pitch from Trevor Bauer. Just holding on a little too tight. Maybe realizing the situation with Correa up there. Right hand hitters have hit 241 against Bauer. The lefties have really struggled at 197. You have a reason for that? It's a changeup. Yep. I think for me, that's a great equalizer. If you're a good fastball pitcher, obviously the numbers are low against that, but he backs it up with that changeup to left handed hitters. Now a 3 2. And got him with a fastball up and in. 95 from Bauer. Yeah, he can reach back. That's a costly strikeout. And now Evan Gaddis with the eight game hitting streak. Might be a young man trying to do a little too much. This is a, really the first time we've seen Correa struggle. But realizing that runner at third base trying to drive him in. Expanding the zone. Evan Gaddis the DH hitting 249. Go way beyond that. 51 RBIs. That is the key for Gaddis. Pops it up behind the dish. And that'll be back in the seats. Good effort by Jan Gomes, but I think we had a better chance of catching that one. I was crawdadding on it. Were you uh, were you heading after it? I was. I was gonna protect the monitor. <laughs> You're a good man. <laughs> yeah, You're a right. good man. <laughs> Trevor Bauer has been hit fairly well here in Cleveland 282 batting average against on the road however 161 BA against him two different pitchers high fastball and that gets destroyed to left field quickly two runs for Houston on home run number 15 by Evan Gaddis and 53 ribbies and that's right wow when you leave it up there yeah, Trevor Bowers looking in disbelief, but that's right in uh, Evan Gaddis's kill zone. <laughs> Is that not, I'm not, I have not seen a guy hit consistently a pitch that far up out of the zone and with authority. Look at the location on this. Are you kidding me? It's a foot and a half up out of the zone. What did you call him earlier today face to face? Yeah, I, I saw Evan down in the clubhouse and I, I took a chance and I said, how's it going, Captain Caveman? And uh, I still have my face attached. <laughs> so it went over well. He's, he was very pleasant about it, but uh, he, he, he has uh, some issues concerning that little white baseball. He had pummeled that pitch right there. That was amazing. I have a feeling the book ought to be don't try going up the ladder on Gaddis. Obi Rasmus at the plate has a 1 1 count. It's good to see the Astros jumping ahead early. Tough time scoring runs last night, but how about Gaddis picking up Tucker and Correa? Two out RBIs. They're always big when you get them like this early in a ball game, taking a lead against a guy like Trevor Bauer who can be tough. And you don't know yet what you're going to get from Dan Straley. Big stuff. Three and one the count. Waiting on deck is Chris Carter. Yeah, he's paying off. You gonna go have a brontosaurus burger after the game? 
I wonder if Fred and Wilma will give him a ride. Gosh. The pitch was a foot and a half up out of the zone. <laughs> Which, again, uh, as you... How do you get on top of that and drive it? As I, you, I, it's, I mean, it defies physics. You said and uh, have implied that you just really don't want to mess around up there. Strike three called inside edge. Rasmus caught. Three strikeouts in the inning, but there was one rather large swing by Evan Gaddis. 2 nothing Houston. Tonight, Jason Kipnis in the top spot, followed by Francisco Lindor and Michael Brantley, David Murphy, Carlos Santana, and Jan Gomes in the middle, and the bottom three, Brandon Moss, Giovanni Urshela, and Michael Bourne. Dan Straley going for your Houston Astros. Talked about that start he had last time out. Came over with Luis Valpoint in that Dexter Fowler trade. He's got a winning record in the major leagues. He averages around seven and a half strikeouts a game. Talking to Steve Sparks before the game, and he said that uh, while down in AAA, looked at some video in 2013, compared it to 2015, and found something that was a little off, made the adjustment. Good changeup. That's a good look at change. And Steve Sparks was talking about that particular pitch and how he holds it, and apparently a really good one. Oh, and to the count on Kipnis, who's been tearing up Major League pitching. Hitting 336 on the year. He has been in or just close out of the lead for much of the season. Miguel Cabrera on the DL leads the American League at 350. Prince Fielder and then Jason Kipnis. Let's take a look at that change. Circle. The arm action on that was impressive. I think what Straley noticed in his motion is that lead arm, lead glove. It's a change again and foul down the left side. When he's going towards home plate, he doesn't want to point that glove towards us up here in the press box. He wants to point it towards the home plate, point it towards the catcher. So make sure that lead shoulder is going downhill. Yeah, it's hard to catch up when you tilt your shoulders, but some guys succeed doing it. Hot shot down the left field side. That's a base hit. And now a tough play for Colby Rasmus. It goes all the way to the wall. This will be at least three bases for Kipnis. He's into third, leading it off of the Indians in the first. And we'll see how this one's ruled.
tough play for Colby out there. Yeah, with the, you've got the shift on in the outfield, so he's playing pretty close to that left field line. As you look at the location, might have wanted it middle in, gets away. Kipnis, as hot as he is, everything's a hit, just touch it. But as close as Colby is to that side of the field, he got it kind of in between. He didn't know whether to go get the baseball or play it off the wall, and it ended up playing him. It is a double and an error, I believe, is what they've ruled. There we go. This is what we were looking for. Sneaks it in there, but Colby made the attempt to go get that ball, but you can see he kind of got caught in between. So Colby gets charged with an error. The Astros jump on top quickly, 2 0, but the Indians in a position to pick up one run. Here in the first inning, if the hitters come through at all. One and one the count on Francisco Lindor. That one's hit on a hop sharply right at Altuve. They'll get the out, but the Indians get the run. It's 2 1. RBI ground out for Lindor. Noticed Colby Rasmus is out there in left field. Jake Marisnik at center and Preston Tucker in right. Marwin Gonzalez again playing third base, swinging a hot bat. Carlos Correa at shortstop. Jose Altuve at second. Chris Carter back out at first base. And Jason Castro after that day off is back behind home plate working with Dan Straley. RBI number seven for Lindor. Base is empty now. One out for Michael Brantley. We saw Brantley hit his fifth home run of the year in last night's game, hitting 293 overall. Just 222 in the month. He is a much better hitter than that number might indicate. I would suggest you won't see anybody any quieter at the plate taking a pitch than Michael Brantley. Takes a strike quite quietly. Two and one. For those wondering, quiet. He has a nice, easy load with his hands. The head doesn't move a lot. He's soft on the front side when he strides out there. Breaking ball hit in the air, left field, going back Rasmus and out number two. That'll bring up the cleanup man, the DH, David Murphy. David Murphy's been having a very nice season, hitting 329 with five homers, 24 RBIs. It's a good fastball at 90 from Straley. Murphy drove in a run with a couple of hits and three at bats last night. Had a double. Also drew a walk. As you watch that at bat from Jason Kipnis. That pitch away with the shift on in the infield really left what felt like an easy hole to shoot through. Uh, well, most left-handed hitters are going to have that third baseman playing off the line to begin with. So that area down the line is usually wide open. Straley with the play. That'll do it for the Indians in the first inning, but they get a run on just one hit and leave nobody. It's 2-1 Houston.
On July 8, 1980, J.R. Richard became the first Astro to be the starting pitcher in an All-Star game. He struck out three and two innings of work and gave Reggie Jackson fits in a 4-2 National League win. Good finish, Reggie. I think Johnny Bench kind of enjoyed catching J.R. I think he's back there giggling at Reggie. Whoa. Did you see that, obviously, that swing on the slider in the dirt? Hitters used to do that all the time on that slider. That's They'd amazing. get the bat started so early, they it, it would be just silly stuff. Oh, Reggie Jackson. That's in an yeah. all-star game he's making guys look like that. Righty to lefty. Righty to righty here as Chris Carter stands in. The Astros got a two-out, two-run home run by Evan Gaddis in the first. After Jose Altuve had let it off with a base hit, he was aboard on the home run. But the Indians come back, pick up a run, a double by Kipnis. And I believe when it's all said and done, that will be awarded as an earned run against Dan Straley. Carter fouls it back. For Chris, the batting average at 193. They have now taken the error off the board in left field, maybe awarding a triple. That would be uh, interesting. Yeah. Fastball finds the inside edge. Bauer even in the count. Initially, they had an error up on the board. Jason Kipnis was awarded a double and an error charge to Colby Rasmus, but they may have changed that. Maybe Kipnis is trying to catch up to Gaddis's triple number. You can only hope to attain certain levels in this game. I'm not sure you want to go that high. <laughs> This is a backup breaking ball. Good effort at framing by Gomes. I cheese fouled back. It stays at three and two. Series even at a game apiece. Four game series, one more tonight, or rather tomorrow night. High fly ball, center field shallow. Michael Bourne comes on and makes the catch. First out here in the second. Look at some of Bauer's splits. Yeah, left versus left handed hitters on the left side, right handed hitters on the right side. When you look at the changeup in the slider, he's going to throw a lot of fastballs to get ahead, but when he tries to put guys away, he's going to throw that changeup right there to the left handers going away from them and then the slider to right handers going away from them on the other side of the plate so he's got good stuff he has those multiple pitches that you got to keep thinking about but he is pretty aggressive with the fastball as we're seeing here early on marwin gonzalez gets himself another start he's been playing really well pops one foul back to the seats quick bat from both the right and left sides of the plate he's as dialed in as i think you and i have seen him Driving the ball too. He's made some good defensive plays in Boston in particular while playing at second base. Got an out at the plate combining with Jason Castro. Just a heck of a play. It really was. Thought he made one at third base. I don't recall last night or the night before, but moving to his right, a really tough play and had a good strong throw for the out. Ball and a strike. Bauer, when he has missed, has missed by wide margins. Of course, that would have been a perfect strike for Evan Gaddis. Yeah, he would have killed that one too. Made it a souvenir. Marwin's hitting 250 overall. He's got a couple of lifetime home runs now against the Indians. Went 0 for 4 in last night's game. Quiet night with the bat, and it snapped a four game hitting streak. Grant Rams one down the right field side, way foul. There's that quick bat we're talking about. Too quick. Had three hits and five at bats in the opener here in the series, and the home run in that game. Played in just one of the games in Boston, had a couple of hits in that one. The Astros lost two of three in Boston, one and one here in Cleveland. 
And trying to pick up win number 50 on the season. Popped up behind the mound. And making the play the first baseman Carlos Santana. Took Trevor Bauer a while to get out of there. He was actually calling it I believe. Good change up. Jason Castro stands in. For Jason, the batting average at 211. He has shown pop seven homers on the year. With that batting average down, the on base percentage is scuffling. First pitch swinging, fouls one down the left side. And watching him swing at that pitch, a borderline inside corner pitch. I wonder if there's become a maybe a new focus to start let, letting it fly a little bit. He's taken a lot of close strikes. I like the aggressiveness early. Jason has really struggled against the Indians on his career in 14 previous games, just a 170 batting average. They come back in and miss. Got 44 career homes as home runs. Second all time in the Astros hit for catchers. Backhanded by Carlos Santana. He feeds on to his pitcher Bauer and a 1 2 3 second inning. Through an inning and a half, 2 1 Houston. The Rangers in a three game series July 17th to the 19th on Friday the 17th 10,000 fans will receive a replica silver boot presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors for tickets call 1-877-9-ASTROS or visit astros.com. Dan Straley back out there we haven't seen him since that start in Boston where he did settle in a bit he said he felt better uh, once he got that slider working and guys in AAA for him he said he made some mechanical adjustments at the end of April I was really struggling before that felt much better it took a couple starts for things to work but he did feel much better as the season went on which led to him being uh, promoted here recently. Carlos Santana leads it off against Dan Straley and a big thanks Julia. By the way Julia is the one that is always in contact with the players and manager and coaches and just a lot of great insight. Santana switch hitter grounds one to Carter. Out number one in the second. Let's take a look at what's going on in that American League West. It is wild. And it's got a chance to go round and round with the Astros losing last night. They dropped a game to the Red Hot Angels. They've been hard charging, Blummer. They've been swinging the bats. 
led by Albert Pujols again making a splash in that home run scene but it, right now it's looking like a two team race the Rangers falling off a little bit that pitching getting beat up but those Angels have not quit John Gomes at the plate takes the breaking ball that misses looked like Jason Castro even now wants to know where that miss. Jason Castro might have good reason for that question behind the plate. Gomes puts it on the ground at third base. Marwood's there. Slings it from the side in the second out of the inning. Did you ever turn around and ask that question and get a really interesting answer from the umpire like I blinked. I don't like you. <laughs> you know I mean is, is there anything they could have said that I mean what was the most interesting. Doug Harvey was. Uh, was a veteran umpire and he would say things like missed by a quarter of an inch. <laughs> Come on. Yeah no for real. And, <laughs> and it wasn't just me I heard numerous catchers talk about that. That's great. Brandon Moss at the plate. Power hitting right fielder. Leads the Indians with 14 home runs. Seldom would you get that umpire that would say I missed it. Yeah I, but you'd hear it once in a while. You would. Doesn't do you any good, but it's nice to understand that he uh, admits to the fact he may have missed one. Mike Scott was throwing up some incredible stuff there in the mid 80s, and I heard an umpire too kind of just blow air out the lungs. How'd he throw that? You know, just it would just come out, you know. <laughs> Lee Wire is a guy that comes to mind, and it was just, it was hilarious at times. Moss hitting just 229 to go with those 14 dingers. But I had the great pleasure of catching some incredible pitchers, including J.R. Richard and Nolan Ryan and Joe Necro and Don Sutton and and Mike Scott and all the guys that came through. And I hate to start naming names because some great ones will slip by. Uh, Joe Sambito and Dave Smith in the bullpen and on and on. So I saw a lot of great stuff. Yes, you did. A little high with that breaking ball. Bob Force or Ken Force rather threw a no hitter with the Astros. You like it or not? I like it. Yeah. I look like that to have been called. Close with the walk. Brandon Moss gets it with two outs. It'll bring up the eight hitter Giovanni Urshela. First walk issued now by Dan Straley. You know you were talking. It's been a month ago probably about the umpires and the fact that they get their nightly. Reports on on how their game went with balls and strikes and everything else they do. And I wonder how often they're seeing these high pitches these. Borderline at the knees pitches and and realizing they're not calling a lot of the strikes that are there. That'd be really great to get your hands on one of those reports. Can you imagine a strike zone just dotted up with about 350 pitches a night, showing where they are and which ones you got right, showing how many balls Man. that are within the strike zone not called. Yeah, I wonder if they just give them a chart on that. Yeah, it would be really interesting to to find out how they are evaluated. The foul ball goes down the right side. 0 and to the count on Urshela. But you got the impression that they get a pretty thorough grading yeah. on every night, right? Yes. Yeah, they were quite open talking about it. Urshela went 0 for 3 last night. 1 for 6 in the series with a double. Now, had that ball stayed right there and Castro had reached up with the bare hand. And grabbed it. That would not have been strike three. It has to touch the catcher's mitt first. Really? If it flips off the catcher's mitt and then sicks there in your neck and you grab it, that would be strike three. Well, that's not fair. He now just caught it with his neck. So you can't give that to him. You, you know, if it sticks right in your ear without hitting the catcher's mitt, it's <laughs> just a foul ball. You get no credit for ear grabbage. A painful. You get a Q-tip to get the ball out. 
At least that was the rule when I played. I assume wow. it is still the same. But again, if that foul tip goes by, hits the catcher's mitt, and then lodges somewhere, interesting, and you, and you grab it before it falls, you've got strike three. They just learned something. Yeah, and I wonder if that's a reviewable play. Little waving strike three by Urshela. That'll do it for a strikeout for Dan Straley. Through two innings, it's 2 1. Astros on top. Let's play Name That Astro. Brought to you by your local Honda dealer. This player won back-to-back -back high school state titles in Florida. Finished top 10 in ML MVP vote three times. Traded for Kirk Schilling, Pete Harnish, and Steve Finley. The adopted brother is former MLB player Storm. I think I got it. Well, there's only one storm I can think about or think of. That's what the same uh, reaction I had. Remember to tweet your answers at Julia Morales. Jake Marisnik leads off here in the third inning. 2 1 Astros. Jake in the nine spot. So he's followed by Altuve and Tucker. Fastball blown by. It's 0 and 2. Jake hitting 246. Five dingers, 21 RBIs. A lot of the offensive work done early in the season. But he continues to play spectacularly in center field. And I think you and I would agree the catch in Boston up against the Green Monster, as good as any we've seen this year. The George Springer catch in Arlington to save the Grand Slam, leading on to a victory. What an enormous, tremendous catch that was. So it's always hard to say which one was the best, but those were both fantastic. No. With that play going into the Green Monster, slamming up against that, the noise it made, no, that, that one thoroughly impressed me. But yeah, George Springer's is right up there. If you threw the word dangerous in there, the one on the Green Monster, easily the winner, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not much give out there in Boston. Could be a lot of take with that board, too. Line drive, center field, base hit for Jake. Leads off the third inning with a hit. Third hit for the Astros. It'll bring up Jose Altuve, who has started himself on a new hitting streak. Let's take a peek at those catches. Judge for yourself. How about the spot that both these plays take, too? Save the game George Springer did. That's San Diego for Jake. Towel will never be the same. This one right here. Oh, man. Listen to that. You know, and again, for me, it's not just the slamming into the wall. It's the danger with those slots and what could have happened. That one scares me each time I watch it. Do you want me to tell you how it ends? Um, I, you, you I've, keep, read, I've read the book. Yeah, I've read the book. I haven't watched the movie. 
movie never matches up. Now Tuve one for one. Picked up a stolen base as well. And scored a run. High fastball chop foul. So when you see Evan Gaddis in Cleveland against the Indians take a high fastball and drive it like that. Can you call it the tomahawk chop? Yeah. I don't know what I mean. That's a, that might be even above a tomahawk chop. You seem confused. Well, just how do you? I mean, I've seen tomahawk chops, and he went far and above. <laughs> Curveball finds the strike zone. It's 0-2 on Jose. I didn't know they did the tomahawk chop here. Thought that was an Atlanta Brave thing. Well, it is, but there's a former Brave, so you can give him the tomahawk chop. It's a Florida State thing, along with the Braves. Mm -hmm. Runner goes pitch driven to right center field and deep going back is Moss. He'll make the catch. Jake Marisnik gets turned around, heads back to first base on out number one. Jack in the box is going to take us inside the box score. Hot and cold zone for Preston Tucker doing a great job taking some of those pitches the other way. He is getting some elevated fastballs up out over the plate and going the other way with them quite nicely. But uh, typical left handed fashion, those down and in pitches, he likes to drive those. Saw him go down to a knee to drive one out of the ballpark here at Progressive Field. One out for Preston. Struck out in the first inning. Trevor Bauer picked up three strikeouts in that first. So we've already seen Jose Altuve pick up a stolen base. He leads the league. That's 25 for Jose. Now we've seen Marisnik in motion. So the leading team in the league in stolen bases trying to do some running tonight. Good swing by Tucker as he fouls it back. Got a special guest coming tonight. Bob DiBiaso. DiBiaso, excuse me, senior VP of public affairs with the Indians but he's done a lot more than that in his lengthy tenure with the Indians and other things we'll talk about his involvement with the movie Major League which you may have seen I'd be thoroughly shocked if any of our viewers have not seen that movie yeah it's a classic that's a must see isn't it somewhere along the line oh man I wonder if Producer Carl Patterson has seen that movie. I don't know. We're going to ask him. So busy prepping for these games. I don't know if he has time. Another big swing by Preston. Oh, and to the count. Yeah, I think Carl could rewrite each scene right now for us. <laughs> Sure, in between pie charts, he's getting some good viewing in. <laughs> Fairly close on Marisnik. Jake runs well, 11 bags and 15 tries this year. So he will draw some attention over there. Altuve, 25 bags. George Springer still second on the club with 14. Marisnik right behind. Tapper on the breaking ball. Will it roll foul? It is rolling fair. And now going for third base is Marisnik. And that keeps that ball alive in fair territory. They couldn't let it roll anymore and had to pick it up. So it's an infield single for Tucker and very alert base running by Jake Marisnik. How about that? A full grown man took a monster hack at this pitch, nubs it down the first baseline, and. One of the unspoken secrets is that grounds crews will taper those foul lines, the dirt areas at least, to funnel back towards the infield. And watch this. 
started to go towards that foul line and started creeping back. Hit the infield grass. But very alert Jake Marisnik watching the play while moving his feet. This ball comes right back to the infield side of the diamond. Sure, you could see it there. I don't know if the ball would have crossed the line, but it was coming back toward the line. It was going to bounce off yeah. the grass and go foul, maybe. But for Bauer, he couldn't wait any longer. That brings up Carlos Correa inside corner again. Off speed pitch, though. Yeah, it might have been the changeup. Yeah. It's a tough pitch. See, this ball hits the grass and now starts back toward the line. But for Bauer, he's hearing or seeing Jake Marisnik streak to third base. You can't wait any longer. So you never know. You get a teammate like that with that kind of base running, might buy you a hit. Got to get the breaks every once in a while. This guy at times makes his own breaks and makes the breaks for the club. Right now, struggling. Can he find a pitch that he can handle? Again, they come up and in with that fastball. 94, he gets a piece. Carlos still looking for his first hit here in the series against the tribe. 0 for 4 in each of the first two games. Came in hitting 315. That has tapered off to 291. Doesn't seem like a whole lot of intrigue as to maybe how they're trying generally to pitch Carlos. Up hard, in hard. Mix in the occasional off speed pitch. It's a, the old saying hard in, soft away. Now he's shown an ability to stay on pitches, use the entire field, hit with power. So you work a guy in until he proves that he can handle that. And then the over the top yacker gets the strikeout. A costly second out. And that's exactly what happened with Carlos in the first inning. Made a costly second out. And now it's up to Evan Gaddis who came through in the first. Yeah, that's the second time Trevor Bauer has gotten Carlos Correa to punch out the runner at third base. Less than two outs. Evan Gaddis picked him up last time by hammering a fastball right around his forehead out of here to left field. Was it that low? Might have been. What's crazy is how he gets into that almost. Jeff Bagwell esque type stance. He's so spread out, gets on those legs. Still has the ability to catch up to a fastball right around his beard. This is not normal. You can't teach this. Like, he, like he's been doing it for years. Guess he's having fun. I don't see any smiles going on with him, but it's a high pitch just foul down at first base. Nice play by Santana. Can't believe Trevor Bauer came up there again. It's a dangerous position to be in. He's got to be thinking right now. Don't do that again. That's only letter high. That's like the bottom of the knees for most guys. Yeah. He had to go back and grab a new tree branch. <laughs> Hi, folks. <laughs> oh, to the count. Look at those feet start sliding back for Evan. And the breaking ball gets him. And now they're going to apply the tag on Marisnik for the final out of the inning. Another strikeout, still 2-1 Houston.
just a bit outside. He tried the corner and missed. Ball four. Ball eight. Low and Vaughn has walked the bases loaded on 12 straight pitches. My thing. You make my heart sing. You walk everything. <laughs> We're in the booth, and uh, as we threatened you, we've got Bob DiBiasio with us. Long time. Uh, well, you've done everything, I guess, with the Indians. I've been here 36 years. Uh, one year a PR chief of the Braves in Atlanta, so 37 in the business. And uh, yeah, Major League was one of the highlights, having uh, worked closely with uh, David Ward, the, the writer, producer, director of that film. And we'll get to that if we have any chance. Ground ball down the first baseline does go foul, so somebody likes us, Bob. Uh, we get a, an extra shot <laughs> three, right here. Three first pitch out. Yeah. That's exactly the way we went. Michael Bourne leads off for the Indians here with the Astros on top, two to one. So, Bob, as, uh, as we get the idea here, you had a little something to do with that now great uh, legendary movie major league tell us about that how that came to back be. in 1989 hank peters was president of the cleveland indians he had come over from the baltimore orioles and um, called me into his office one day and said hey for some reason major league baseball thinks it's a good idea for hollywood to make a baseball movie and have the cleveland indians be the feature of the movie so here you go have fun and he throws the script to me and he goes you've got script approval have fun with this and we did. We had a tremendous amount of fun with David Ward, Chris Chesser, the co-producer. David Ward was from Shaker Heights, Ohio, huh? right over here. So that's why the Indians and Chris Chesser grew up in Tucson, right near High Corbett Field, where, where the you Indians used trained to, at where the time, you used yeah. to be when you yeah. were a tribesman. Yeah. And so they had that Cleveland connection, and so that's why the Indians were featured. And uh, we just had a lot of fun look, with them. Look at this. We've got a two-two <laughs> count. There, they're working counts here, trying to help, help us out us a little out. bit. <laughs> So, you know, all the actors say, well, they read the script, they loved it, and just uh, they knew it was going to be big when they when they read it. Uh, did you read through it, and what did you think? Well, I had to read through it, and I went through and took a red well, pen. What adjustments things. did you make? Well, You're going to take credit was, for something they, right I, now. Well, one thing they did, they had a, for some reason, they didn't treat Rocky Colorado, my boyhood idol, growing up here in Cleveland. And uh, so I had to take that part out. Oh, is that right? Okay, we've got a fly ball to right field. Michael Bourne. <laughs> After seeing some pitches, makes the first out of the inning. Okay, so yeah, this, there we are. This is you and the guys are doing everything that you suggest. Oh, absolutely. It almost looks like Jim Kern there. Yeah, it? it does, doesn't it? Yeah, Tom Berenger and Charlie Sheed uh, after a night in Cleveland. Uh, they look rather excited. There with Mel Hall at that point. Uh, we had They came to the ballpark a lot to, uh, to promote the movie. We had the premiere here. Uh, really a tremendous amount of fun. I just remember they obviously used one certain word that you can't use on television a lot in that movie. And uh, Hank Peter's wife, when it was over, she turned to me and said, so you had script approval of this and you allowed that word in this movie all throughout the entire thing? And I said, yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. And she goes, you kiss your mother with those lips? <laughs> Shame on you, Bob. Exactly. Well, that, you were upholding the authenticity the of, the, of, of the game. Yeah. <laughs> well, you sat there and we said red tags. I don't know if you remember the movie. They had red tags in spring training where if you yep. saw a red tag, you were booted. Obviously, they didn't do that. Kipnis hits a line drive down the left field side. Nice running grab by Rasmus. So we've got two outs quickly, Bob. So uh, <laughs> what cracked you up in the movie? What actually uh, just broke you down? Well, Bob Euchre, to be honest yeah. with him. Did, he, you, did his, you get him into the movie? Uh, no, no. He They picked him um, because obviously he was an actor. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just thought his oh, Mr. Portrait, Belvedere, he's perfect. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. he was famous with Johnny Carson back <laughs> well, in those yes, days. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah. I just thought his role was just absolutely perfect. And the idea that people may not know is there was a different ending. And when they showed the movie, uh, having the owner of the team, the female owner of the team, actually being in on them wanting to win, it didn't sit well with the audience. So they changed it so that she would be That's the true villain uh, that they needed. That a would villain. have been the, the, the pre-money ball movie then. <laughs> she knew what she was doing with the special sabermetrics bringing in these guys. So, exactly. so tell me this. Oh, we've got... Uh, yeah, there we go. Ray we've Vaughn. got the boys here already. <laughs> Did that movie, do you think, have anything to do with all the popularity of the Indians during the 90s? Well, it was so funny because all of a sudden um, we go from being, you know, a 100 loss team to a 100 win team. And uh, right after the movie came out, 
And so people thought that uh, we were smart in that regard, but obviously, uh, who would have known? Bob, Timing is everything. Bob DiBiase, uh, who made the Indians what they were during those glory years. Thanks a lot for being Thanks, with us. Thanks, guys. No, you bet. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Score us half. It's 2 1 Houston. Wednesday night home game is one dollar hot dog Wednesday presented by Nolan Ryan Beef. The next dollar dog fiesta is Wednesday, July 22nd when the Astros take on the Red Sox. For more info, visit astros.com slash dollar dogs or call one 9 astros Thanks, Julia. Colby Rasmus leads off here in the fourth inning. Astros on top two to one. Both runs for Houston coming on a two run bomb in the first inning by Evan Gaddis. Indians got a run in that same first inning. Jason Kipnis, I believe now, has been awarded a triple and eventually scored. Fly ball shallow in left field. And this one's got a chance of dropping, but a nice diving grab by Michael Brantley. And that takes care of that. If you take a look at where Brantley is, that's an easy play for the shortstop. And I think Brantley's telling him. How far Bradley has to come. Yeah, these shifts, that's what creates these situations. Yeah, was that the shift? I, I guess maybe that was. Yeah, that boy, that does create some tough Man, spots. That is an empty space out there, but Brantley throws it quickly. What I liked is how he called it early. Told the infielders to stay away. I'm gonna give it my best effort. If it falls, it's on his watch, but he made a great play. We've seen a lot of challenging plays with shift situations. It's a fine effort. Does it with the bat and the glove. Third game of the series, we've seen Brantley in center as the DH and now the left fielder. One out for Chris Carter. Chris got over that 200 mark for a while. He's now back down to 192. Carter is second on the club in home runs. Of course, Luis Valbuena, who has been ailing a bit here the last few days, leads with 19. Gaddis has 15, just like Carter, for that second spot. And then it's George Springer. It's going to be a tough week trying to get George back in the fold. Sure is. John Singleton has had some chances since coming back up. Curveball got him on the 2-2, the hammer over the top. That's been an effective pitch. Two outs in the inning, six strikeouts now for Trevor Bauer. Yeah, that's really been the go-to pitch with two strikes. 
just good old fashioned breaking ball really gets on top of that creates that 12 6 rotation. Yeah, I was really curious to hear from Bob DiBiasio. What about the movie actually cracked him up? I mean, you kind of know going in what you're going to get, but does something, you know, just really grab you when you watch the movie? Bob Euchre will do that to you. Oh, I was reading that he's, a lot of that stuff was just improv for him. You've been around Bob at all. He's, he's, he's just like that in real life. Marwin takes low, 2 0 the count. The Astros have four hits on the night. The Indians just one. And that was the leadoff man, Jason Kipnis, in the first inning. Two balls and a strike. Final game of the series and the final time these two teams will meet on the season comes tomorrow night. Brett Oberholzer back with the Astros against Cody Anderson, right handed. Line shot into left center field. That's a base hit. Marwin gets himself a knock. It comes with two outs. Big turn at first base, and he'll hold there as Jason Castro will come to the plate. That was a really good piece of hitting. Kind of inside outs this pitch. Like a little bit of a wrinkle in it, maybe a slider, but does a good job on that inner third. Just bring those hands in nicely, barrels it up, goes the other way. Sweet swing. Castro 0 for 1 on the night. Grounded out to first in the second. Marwin not one of the big threats to run. But has stolen three. He's been caught twice. Well, we've seen a variety of defenses on Jason Castro in the last few weeks. Hits a fly ball to center. Michael Bourne with the easy play and that'll do it. A two out single by Marwin Gonzalez. He's stranded through three and a half. It's a 2 1 Houston lead. Cola Value Days package is one of the best ballpark bargains available for select Monday through Thursday regular season games. This offer scores you a ticket, hot dogs, soda, and popcorn all for just $16 to purchase. To purchase tickets, visit astros.com slash coke value or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Oh, Ash, they love you here. Happy birthday. Yeah, I think you look might, great for being 85. He might have gotten part of that wrong. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to check in with Rick Manning, former teammate of mine. Yeah. <laughs> here's here's my glance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, buddy. <laughs> Looking over it <laughs> and saying thanks for that, pal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was good stuff. Well, I'm going to have my opportunities, I think, to get back. We called him Arch.
for Archie Manning, but yeah, we'll, we'll uh, so, have some opportunities. Yep, nothing like a good teammate wishing you a happy birthday. Shame on you. <laughs> wow. You know, you come to the ballpark to hang around guys you you know and love, and and that's what you get. That's a true sign of affection. Well, I hope I'm still doing this when I'm 85. Be a pretty good run. What does that give you? Uh, maybe four or five years. I haven't figured it out, but should be nice. <laughs> four or five. <laughs> Michael Bradley at the plate, leading off the fourth. Yeah, but a big thanks to Rick Manning and everybody else involved there. I'm gonna have to run over next half inning and make sure and give a big thanks to Arch. Bradley flied to left field in the first inning. Just one hit for the Indians, Jason Kipnis. Those are the notables today. They're on Al, there with Spanky. Al Spanky. Yeah. Spangler on there, huh? Beck. Wait a minute now. Beck was the. Beck is a uh, singer, songwriter. He's the guy that just picked up one of the big awards, right? Two turntables and a microphone. That was the song? The one that I remember. Yeah. No, he came out with a new album and one, but he's had a couple of good albums. We okay. haven't stolen a couple riffs from him. You have? No, you you're the guitar player. Okay, well, is he a guitar player? I think he is a wizard on okay. various see, instruments. See, see, there's where we vary. The wizard part. Maybe in your own mind. No, he's the he's the wizard. I, I would uh, stray from that line. We'll explain in the in the in between. Three and two the count as Brantley leads off the fourth. One of those 10 game road trips. So we mentioned tomorrow night Oberholzer against Cody Anderson. On to Tampa Bay after a night game. It'll be Colin McHugh, Dallas Keuchel, and Lance McCullers in those final three games leading up to the All Star break. It was just a couple of years ago. Was it two years ago that we met Jared Cozart in a game in Tampa Bay right before the oh, All Star he, break, or was that three dealt. years ago? No, I believe it was uh, last year. Whenever that was, George Springer was extremely excited about that game. How do you get broken bones to heal more quickly? Milk. Does the body good. Sharply hit up the middle. That's a base hit for Bradley. Comes leading off, brings up David Murphy, the DH and the cleanup man. Hit number two for the Indians. Just a good job staying on that fastball down and away, going back up the middle. Altuve playing him a little bit to pull. Just a good piece of hitting. It's a pretty good battle. Murphy grounded out back to the mound to end the first inning. Talked about the year he's been having 327 the batting average. Never know what leads to what on a ball club but when you've got some. Guys in this case left hand hitters who swing it well the Indians have Kipnis and Brantley and. David Murphy and kind of on and on they've got Brandon Moss with the power game from that side of the plate you wonder how much they look at each other talk to each other try to pick up something from each other and we've got some dangerous bats Scott Kazmir has left the game with the left tricep tightness uh oh that's not good. And a lot of talk about Casimir, obviously, as 
Well, the woes in Oakland go, and he was one of those guys that might be a trade piece for them. You know, with all the talk about the Oakland A's being one of the best teams in baseball by people who look at the stats, can they afford to walk right out of the race? You wouldn't think so. I mean, it's not like they're close right now. They're in last place in the American League West, 10 games back, but things can change quickly. Line shot is foul. Here we go with the foul balls again. Brantley had a couple. Straley's making some good pitches. They're just doing a better job of fighting them off. It's one of those intriguing defenses with the shift on in the infield. And then the outfield shifting the other way. And fairly extreme with that shift. Line drive down the right field side. There's nobody close to this. And so it's time to run for a while. Brantley heads into third base held there by the third base coach Mike Sarbaugh runners at second and third nobody out on the double by Murphy and that'll bring up five hitter Carlos Santana. It's a little surprised to see Sarbaugh hold him up so soon. I was watching Brantley run again and com commented I don't know if it was last night it was yesterday yeah. uh, but that he doesn't run as well as I might have anticipated. That was a change up. Straley held on to it just a little too long and Murphy hits the Astros well coming into this game hitting 315 against them just drops the head on it you see it took Preston Tucker a while to get out there kind of bottles it a little bit but Sarba down there at the bottom of your screen holding up Brantley so there might be something going on that Sarba knows about with Brantley's uh, running ability right now although he came in nicely on that catch he made earlier in the game another shift on as Carlos Santana stands in, yep, Preston Tucker had forever to run to get to that ball in right field. Well, when Carlos Santana's wow. had men on base, he has gotten rather quiet. Said it before, if you're not if you're not going good during a season, you at least want to try and go good when guys are on base. The overall numbers at 211 for Carlos Santana, maybe putting a little extra pressure on himself with runners in scoring position. One and one on that curveball. It looks like we should get through this evening without rain. I believe that's what we're hearing, right? Yeah, tonight should be all right, but uh, tomorrow's not looking so good. Might be a rude awakening uh, if you're going to be up around 5, 6 a.m. Ground ball to first. Indians will tie it as scoring from third base is Brantley. Murphy moves into third on out number one. RBI ground out Santana. That's how the Indians have gotten both of their runs tonight. They were tied at two here in the fourth inning. The average will drop. With runners on runners on base for Carlos Santana, but he does get an RBI out of it. Yeah, that rain we talk about tomorrow. At least the forecast for the present time is rain should end about six in the evening. Yep, and that's then, what I keep uh, hearing. Hopefully, nice for a ball game. John Gomes at the plate. Infield draws in. He's the six hitter for Cleveland. It's a good slider. It's nice that he can start with it and throw it for a strike to get ahead. Ground ball to short. Runner will have to freeze. Carlos Correa gets the out at first base after freezing the runner Murphy. And two outs now. So a nice job by Dan Straley. Real nice job helping himself out, keeping that ball down and getting that ground ball. Easy read at third base for Murphy, knowing the entire infield is playing in. For Dan Straley, it's his 44th career major league start, 50th appearance. Trying to pick up his first win as a member of the Astros. 
changeups a good one. Again, early in the count to get ahead. Real nice. Saw the circle change, but creates that good, almost borderline screwball rotation to it, getting it go, to go down and away. And again, it's always that big debate. You've shown him that pitch twice. Do you show it a third time? Because he's not close. Well, what I like is the first one was a good pitch. Swing and miss. He comes back and buries it. Throws a better one. And by a better one, I mean throws it down out of the zone. And he gets him to chase. So if you could throw a similar pitch out of the zone, down in the dirt, Castro doing a good job of blocking, maybe get him to chase again. They come up with the fastball. Take a look at that pitch number two. That's that circle change. Good job getting kind of a. It's amazing how that rotation slows down too. But the no two count. I think you saw what Castro wanted to do is elevate that fastball. Maybe come back to it. And the change up gets him. Three change ups in that sequence. The strikeout of Moss. And that'll do it for the drive of the fourth inning. They get just one run. Despite the single and double to start it. Well pitched Trevor Bauer going up tonight against Dan Straley here in the fifth inning for the Astros 9 1 and 2 Jake Marisnik leads off and Trevor Bauer what is he he's got all kinds of unusual things that go on on the hill here's what you would call a thinker he is uh, very in tune with the mechanics of the pitching motion spends a lot of time in the offseason going around the country talking to different Experts on, I guess it's a, what is it, uh, Zen stuff, biokinesis ah. type stuff, kinesiology. He would have loved, I, I would imagine, and I don't know that he hasn't done it, talking with Mike Marshall of the Dodgers back in the 70s, I guess, 80s, probably primarily 70s. You want to see some of the most bizarre. Impossible to achieve numbers for relievers yeah. anymore. Mike Marshall's the guy to look at. Pitch hit in the air, and that's deep in left field. Going back is Brantley. He's on the track in front of the wall and makes the catch. Jake Marisnik reaches out and almost gets it up on the wall. Time now for the AT&T rewind. Look back to the glory days of the Cleveland Indians. Omar Vizcal up the middle, absolute magician with the glove and without the glove. But in that lineup, he was another table setter for some of those big boppers that they had. Played an unbelievable shortstop. And probably, if you ask him right now, he could go out and do the same thing. 97 World Series. Played up the middle with Roberto Alomar. What a tandem. Are you kidding me? How about that backhanded flip from forever? My goodness. You and I could pitch with those guys playing up the middle. Yeah, that might be a stretch, but uh, we could take our shot. 
you know, I, I wondered if Omar Vizquel went to a tryout camp and said, I'm a shortstop with that arm. Would anybody look at him today? Altuve hits it in the air, left center field. That's fairly deep as going back is Brantley. A couple of fly balls to left field to start the inning. Two outs for Preston Tucker. And, and what I'm saying is Omar didn't have the strongest of arms and yet could do everything. He could get rid of it in a millisecond. The reason we bring that up is because we want to check out the combos. We got a good one going here with the Houston Astros, potentially with Correa and Altuve. There you see some combinations with the highest batting average. Those are some big names. Cano and Jeter on there twice. Got Rod Carew and Danny Thompson. Did Rod Carew carry most of the weight there on that? I would average? imagine that he carried the uh, the large load. Yeah. <laughs> Ground ball up the middle. A little bit of a shift on. Lindor is there in a 1 2 3 inning. Turned in very nicely by Trevor Bauer. We played four and a half and we're tied at two. Houston Methodist is going to help us get to know Dan Straley. Good answer on that first one. Favorite meal, wife's enchiladas. It's always a good sign. One quality from another pitcher. A roll is Chapman's fastball. <laughs> that's that a thinking a, man right there. Yeah, that's a good one. This guy is. And of course, One Direction song that <laughs> is his guilty pleasure is Steal My Girl. I love those answers. The Indians sent their eight hitter Giovanni Urshela to the plate. Eight, nine, and one. Yeah, this on paper was one of those pitching matchups where you just didn't know what you were going to get tonight. Trevor Bauer has been pitching well for Cleveland. Had no idea you were going to get bat tosses of that kind of quality. And again, thankful that nobody got injured on that ball skip. I mean, the bat skipped off the top of the dugout. Wow, good top hand release. That's always the frightening thing. The guy in the front bails, yet the guy in the red jacket wears it. Nice when uh, the handle is what oh. winds up in your in your chest and not the barrel. And it's a full bat instead of the splintered barrel end of it. Yeah, that's true. One and two on Urshela. We've shown that American League West with the Astros leading by two and a half over the Angels. The American League East has the Yankees 
on top of Baltimore and Toronto each by a game and a half. Tampa Bay and Boston trailing. The Red Sox now are just five games back. Strikeout to start the inning. That's three now for Straley. He's gotten Urshela twice with that slider as we look at what he did in that start against Boston. I was actually surprised that changeup is up around 10% because I really didn't feel like we saw it that often. Change things up a little bit, pardon the pun, in this game right now, throwing a lot more changeups to those left handed hitters. But it's probably because he had a good one in the bullpen. It looks like he brought it out onto the mound. Got a punch out of Moss on that changeup. Doing a good job in this pitcher's duel right now. I would say it's actually rare when a pitcher goes out there back to back or take three games and does this has the same kind of sequence and percentage of pitchers time after time it's it's a feel thing from night to night for any pitcher well it's a feel thing yes what you have working that night but I also think it's the matchup too. what team yeah. are you going up against and how do you use your pitches against them you know I, I caught a number of great pitchers and scouting reports weren't that big of a key for those guys they did their thing Nolan Ryan did his thing he wasn't concerned about what the report said about so and so hitter he did his thing and uh, he figured he could win with his stuff. He did. Typically did and that's the crazy thing that gives you an idea how good those guys were because most hitters probably knew what they were going to get from a guy like Nolan Ryan yet he still went out there and struck everybody out. Strike three called on that change up on the outside edge back to back punch outs. Michael Bourne down that's two outs for the leadoff man Jason Kipnis. Change up is working for Dan Straley. Throwing it for strikes. Getting guys to chase at it. You know what though, if you go out there in your first couple of innings, you throw about five or six change ups, you can't come near the strike zone. You kind of abandon the pitch and you find something else that works on that night. Jason Kipnis has tripled down the left field line and lined out near that line. Nice running grab by Colby Rasmus in the third inning. Pitchers are lucky in that sense. They've got, you know, three, four different pitches that they can go to. As a hitter, I only had one swing from each side. I couldn't change that. Ground ball to first. Oh, I tried many of a version, and <laughs> yeah, that was hard to make them work. One, two, three inning for Dan Straley, who has now retired six in a row. Live baseball at bat is up to the moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, statcast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Welcome back to Progressive Field, the Cleveland Indians, a franchise with a lot of rich history. And if you want to see some of that here at Progressive Field, check out Heritage Park, where I am now, just behind the center field wall. You can find the team's Hall of Fame members, lots of plaques. The top 100 players of all time for the Indians. Bob Feller's on that list. Kenny Lofton, I could go on. Alan Ashby should be up here somewhere. Let's see if we can find his plaque. Um, is this an alphabetical order, you think? 
Wow, Julia, keep searching. I think you're going to have to go down a, another concourse or so to, to get to that one, but uh, you'll find it. Carlos Correa leads off here in the sixth inning, a 2 2 game. Everything I did was forgotten when they broke down the mistake by the lake. Yeah, they tore down the Muni. You left your mark on that place. Yeah, that's why I was so <laughs> renowned at that point. <laughs> Those were tough days. Well, jam shot ground ball to shortstop. They continue to come in and get in on the hands of Carlos Correa. Out number one here in the sixth inning. Brings up the man, Evan Gaddis. So when you're struggling right like Carlos Correa is right now, and it's obvious they're getting in on him a lot. Does batting practice entail that pitch in on the hands? It's tough to recreate that in batting practice. Unless you've got a batting practice pitcher that can light it up and just go ahead and try and fire it in there as hard as they can, but you can't recreate sink. It's tough to recreate miles per hour. More often than not, you see guys even in the big league going into the tunnels and getting on a tee, setting that ball up where that pitch normally is and trying to just get a nice routine going, get a good rhythm going, trying to create a good bat path to that pitch and hopefully you take it out there on the field. Gaddis gets the breaking ball up and hits it foul. Boy, he's getting a lot of pitches up to handle. Wow. There's a strike in cricket. Good frame by Gomes. How do you hold that? Tightly. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, we're going to have to talk to <laughs> Jan Gomes about that. That over the top hammer from Bauer has been very effective tonight. And it looks like he's changing speeds on it too because he kind of flips some in there and then he comes back and throws that power curveball right there. This is just a little courtesy chat right here to give Jan Gomes a chance to regroup. They have gotten nicked on that foul ball. <laughs> Two and two the count. 95. Bauer throwing very hard that over the top curveball has been good. He's got a change up mixes in a slider. It's not like the Indians have torn it up with their pitching but they've got some arms. And the curveball gets him. Two down in the inning that's seven strikeouts now for Bauer. Our Geico quote of the day is Michael Bourne on stealing a hit after having a hit stolen. That's my motto. If I get a hit stolen from me, I say, okay, if I can't get a hit, somebody else isn't going to be able to get a hit. Sometimes you got to use some of that anger as motivation, and he didn't get that hit because Kobe Rasmus robbed him. In turn, he goes out to center field, takes one away. Astro fans are used to seeing a guy like Michael Bourne sprinting around center field, making some great plays. They know he has the wheels. Colby Rasmus over two struck out looking in the first inning fly to left field. It's one in the air to right coming on to make the play Brandon Moss a nice easy one two three inning. Right now Trevor Bauer is rolling along it's two two.
Book your low fare right now at southwest.com. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by Whataburger. You've never had a club sandwich quite like this. The Whataburger Honey Mustard What a Chicken Club. Here for a limited time only. Jerry's going to have to change allegiance, I think, with that one. That one sounded good. We're on a 2-2 tie as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. 2-3-4 coming up for the Indians. Francisco Lindor at the plate. Lindor, a switch hitter, 21 years of age. Getting in front is Straley. He has struck out four. Trevor Bauer has struck out seven. The Indians with just three hits against Straley. And he was masterful getting out of the fourth inning, allowing just one run. Lead off single by Brantley. Murphy doubled. The Indians had runners at second and third. A ground out later. They had a run in and a man at third base. But Jan Gomes grounded out with the infield in and then a strikeout to end it. There's a pretty good draft class. How did George Springer last till number 11? Bad scouting. Francisco Lindor picked ahead of him. I'm pretty sure Garrett Cole and Trevor Bauer were actually on the same team at UCLA. Yeah. Not a bad one two punch on a weekend in the Pac 12. They're kind of getting lost there. Jose Fernandez. Fly ball on a line to right field. Preston Tucker makes the grab. That starts the sixth. Brings up Michael Brantley. Brantley one for two. And scored run number two for the tribe. The change up, not a good one as he leaves it up. Paints the fastball. One and one now as Michael Brantley stands in with one out, hitting 294. It's not like the Indians are loaded with a bunch of home run thump in the middle. They've got some good hitters, though. Ground ball to second. Altuve makes the play on to first. Two outs in the sixth. Brings up the cleanup man, David Murphy. Come out to the St. Arnold's Bar at Minute Maid Park for baseball on tap on Friday, July 17th. It kicks off at 4.30 p.m. and features a beer tasting, live music, and souvenir Astros. Pint glass to the first 500 fans with an event ticket. For more information, call 1-877-9-ASTROS or visit astros.com slash baseball on tap. Guys, just reminded by a good buddy, Bill Dolly, about Joe Charbonneau, one of the guys that came on like a flame with the Cleveland Indians. Didn't last a long time, but I wonder if his name is down there on that wall where Julia's still searching for my name. may not be on that wall Ash but it's in our hearts it's where it counts for me too. appreciate that Will Harris gets it loose well maybe we're looking at the last inning from Dan Straley but quite a night two outs into the sixth change up gets the weak fly ball easy for Tucker and that'll do it here in the sixth inning a one two three frame Nine in a row retired for Dan Straley. A 2 2 tie.
The month of July is presented by Progressive. We got Blummer. We got one more with the Indians on to Tampa Bay. And then what are you going to do in the All-Star break? I'm going to be on the beach. I'm going to be trying to change my skin color a little bit. Get nice and tanned up for that uh, Kansas City series when I see you out there for three games. How about Texas coming up for three? Day off before the Red Sox come in. That'll be good. That'll be nice. Yeah. Give the Astros some rest and maybe get out there and beat up on the Rangers a little bit. So that's the homestand following the All-Star break. Three with the Texas Rangers, a day off, and then the Boston Red Sox come in for three. Chris Carter pops the first thing he sees in the air. And that's dropped. No! Hung on to eventually by Jan Gomes. A little wry smile and out number one. So make your plans to join us back at Minute Maid Park when the Rangers and the Red Sox come in. Well, that's one of the worst feelings in the world is when a pop up bounces out of the glove. Able to recover quite nicely. It's tough. You could see he wasn't even looking up at the glove area when the ball came out. One out routinely. Marwin Gonzalez comes to the plate. Marwin is one for two on the night. Let's take another look. Slow it down, will you? Really dissect this thing. See, the eyes aren't even on the baseball until now. He almost put his eye on the ball. He sat on his shoulder like a parrot, and then he cobbled it. Thank you very much. I knew I had that. <laughs> Marwin is one for two on his night. A base hit in the fourth inning. Fairly straight up defense. You don't see that anymore. Take a picture. Let me get my camera. Fastball hit down the left field line, but slicing and goes foul. Marwin thinking, how can I turn this into a nine inning game? Full nine innings. That's the goal when you play on the road. It's not necessarily Jeff Blum's goal, but. What, to make it through nine? Not through. To end it at nine. No swing on that half swing. Dana DeMuth has done it a long time. The crew chief says no, he did not go. Wow. Might have been a little borderline there for me. Yeah, that barrel got right out there beyond the front of the plate. Nonetheless, it's two and two on Marwin. Jason Castro waits on deck. Fly ball goes foul down the left field side. So I mentioned that Dana DeMuth is down there at third base and gave Marwin the extra hacks here. I'm told Dana DeMuth was on hand for Craig Biggio's first ever major league hit. We saw a highlight of that. He was at first base and Dana was behind him. Still going strong. Man has seen some baseball. I wonder what he thought when he saw Craig Biggio at that time. This guy's going to be in the hall. Four ball got him looking. Eight strikeouts now. As Trevor Bauer has been really tough, but for a first inning two run home run on a high fastball hit by Evan Gaddis, the Astros haven't done much at all against Bauer. Shown a good mix of pitches. A lot of fastballs, a lot of sliders, really getting a lot of these punch outs on. Astro hitters with the breaking ball. He's got that 12 6 and this one kind of backs up a little bit, catching that outside edge, according to Paul Nauert. Marwin didn't agree. 
Castro's 0 for 2 on the night. Fastball in the hands, hit in the air to right field. Easy as Brandon Moss comes in. And again, turning a 1 2 3 inning. That's the third in a row picked up by Trevor Bauer. Through six and a half, we're tied at two. Time to name that Astro. Brought to you by your local Honda dealer. I had no idea who this was until that bottom line. The adopted brother is Storm. Last name is Davis. Most people on Twitter got this one right. Glenn Davis, the big bopper. There have been multiple big boppers, haven't there? This Hard one could hit a baseball a long way. Good teammate. Yeah, yeah. Glenn, uh, Glenn was a fun guy. He uh, was accused of a few things. A little mischievous work in the clubhouse through the years. <laughs> he actually put a mouse, a live mouse, in a certain piece of midsection equipment for me. That uh, wow, it really got me. <laughs> Thoroughly got me. Carlos Santana at the plate. A two-two tie here in the seventh. Somehow I put on that equipment. A sidetrack talking to somebody else and all of a sudden running up my body was this this mouse. Unbelievable. Joe Thatcher along with Will Harris now throwing in the Astros pen. Straley's pitched well. Ball behind here three and zero. Oh. Trying to throw that 2 0 change up, but at 93 pitches, I think he's competed extremely well against what Trevor Bauer has done to the Houston Astros offense. And a four pitch walk that starts the seventh for the Indians. Brings up Jan Gomes. Not much speed at first base, not a guy that would typically butt at the plate. See how the Indians play this. It was Gomes grounding up to the drawn in infield with Carlos Correa making the play in the fourth inning man on third base one out. That was a big second out leading to the strikeout of Brandon Moss and Straley got out of that fourth inning allowing just one run to tie the ball game. Shift on this is intriguing when you're looking for the double play. And the fastball runs up and in and hits Gomes. And that's not what you were looking for if you're with the Astros. So a walk and a hit batter to start the inning. And now A.J. Hinch is coming out of the dugout. He's got a righty and a lefty. Left hand hitting Brandon Moss coming to the plate. Five pitches and that spiraled out of control quickly. Now A.J. has asked for the right hander. That's Will Harris. And again the lefty Brandon Moss coming to the plate. 
So Dan Straley's done with his night. Pitched very well until here in the seventh inning. All tied at two. done now and we've got our AT&T call to the bullpen it's Will Harris and why Will Harris now Blummer well you mentioned that left hander Moss is coming up to hit you look at the opponent batting average against Will Harris is at 123 overall against left handers he has held them to an 098 batting average with that fastball cutter that he has around 91 92 miles an hour also has that 12 6 hammer Pitching with those two pitches, he's actually done extremely well. Another one of those nice waiver pickups of Jeff Luno to put in that bullpen, shoring that thing up, creating some depth out there, and there's the numbers we talk about. Extremely low, but even lower for those left-handed hitters. Tough he's, time scoring them up, and I don't think Moss is up there in a position to bunt. This guy has been as good as they come in the major leagues this year, and now big situation. Trying to keep it here tied at two in the seventh inning. The Indians have other plans. Brandon Moss at the plate has walked and struck out. Do the Indians play for the bunt with their best home run hitter at the plate? No. And the eight and nine guys following. First pitch in for a strike. Man, that might have been the best pitch he gets to see. He's really the closest thing to the crusher in this lineup. Fourteen homers on the year. Good curveball. It's 0 and 2. And when you look for the RBI leader of the Indians, it's Brandon Moss, 46. Down 0 2, staring at some nasty pitches on that outside corner. Now you're in defensive mode if you're Brandon Moss. Brandon Moss had a long night last night. Struck out four times. Again, 0 2 count. We know that Will Harris has that good 12 6 curveball that he can throw in the dirt. We've seen Brandon Moss chase some off speed pitches down out of the zone. Maybe elevating the eyes right there to come back with something down in the zone, get the swing and miss. Didn't bite. That's tough to bounce back after a night when you strike out four times you get the golden sombrero and now you're in a key moment the following night in the seventh inning of a tie ball game. Isn't that what baseball does to you. It is it keeps putting you in, in those situations. Look you get exposed in this game. You have to hit the spotlight every night a number of times. It is true. It's a piece on the fastball. It's still two and two. Good pitch down and away. Oh. 
another one of the guys Brandon Moss that got away from the Oakland A's last year. And he had 25 home runs last year with Oakland. At 30 the year before. The Oakland A's really messed around with the makeup of that roster and it hurt him. Three and two. Well, what was it I guess in the matter of about six months you would get. Suspettus out of the lineup. Josh Donaldson over the offseason and Brandon Moss out of the offseason. I mean that's three guys that probably give you 60 home runs a year. They Easy. got John Lester and Jeff Smarja but lost them both in the offseason. Yep. It's a gamble. A little tapper. A number of Astros fans on this road trip starting in Boston. Four games here in Cleveland with tomorrow night's game. And then three coming up in Tampa Bay before the All Star break. I think there's been a lot of Astro fans around, but I think they're finally comfortable enough to actually wear those jerseys out <laughs> to the ballpark. That's, it's kind of a coming out party time yeah, this year, right? Taking full advantage of it. That's a good point. I fastball and getting a piece is Moss. So he punches out four times last night, but now makes a really tough time for Will Harris. He's done a good job of getting back in this at bat. He was down 0 2 on a great fastball in the outside corner, then a breaking ball, go down 0 2. Fouled off some tough pitches, taken some tough pitches. Having a good at bat in a tough situation. Pops it up, but this curls back to the seats. Moss stays alive. This will be the tenth pitch of the at bat. And Brandon Moss was an all star in the American League last year. Derek Norris got taken out of that Oakland A's lineup, too. Going to San Diego. That's right. That's right. He did a fine a job as their catcher. Another All Star. Got him on strikes, and a very big strikeout for Will Harris coming on. Gets it with the full count. One out now for the eight hitter. Giovanni Urshela comes to the plate. Some perseverance being shown right there by Will Harris. With the runner in scoring position, Brandon Moss expanding the zone, chasing that ball down. These two base runners belong to Dan Straley. Fastball line to left field. That's deep. Rasmus with a heck of a play. He turned immediately and went back and found the spot. That is some kind of defense in left field by Colby Rasmus. He turned the wrong way. Spun all the way around and made that play. That was pretty incredible. The athleticism to make that quick move. Watch out there and left. Looks over his left shoulder, then completely spins around and picks the ball up again and makes a snag of that. How about this notion? You play center field all your career. Balls don't hook on you so much in center field. That's a great and point. Now you play in the corner and you get that hooking shot. That's exactly what happened right there. Great call. What a great play by Colby Rasmus. Two outs. Michael Bourne takes the curveball for a strike. Considering the situation, that's a so far it's a lifesaver. Lifesaver with no Redson. No Redson. You're sure on that? Only certs. <laughs> Ground ball back to the mound. Will Harris is going to get out of this jam. He gets the three hitters he faces Moss, Urshela, and Bourne throw in a little ex excellent defense by Colby Rasmus, and you're still tied at two.
Cardinals pitching matchup presented by Chevron. Care for your car. Cody Anderson for the Cleveland Indians going. He's making his fourth start. Fred Overholtz will be, I believe, might be on his way here. Had some trouble with all the United issues going on today around the country. But he will be in the in Astros uniform and on the roster and on the bump going for those Houston Astros. Got roughed up last time against the New York Yankees, but the three starts previous to that, to that pitched quite well, but getting another opportunity. To the eighth inning we go. Trevor Bauer still on. He has had effective quick innings as he gets the foul ball to start things. That was awesome. That hit right on top of the monitor in the radio booth next to us. That was great. No guts by Sparks to reach out and make the play? No, it's the uh, Indians radio, I believe. Oh, I see. Yeah, that was a good one. Nice. It came straight down. That was great. Shrapnel everywhere. So I can still maintain my strong idolization of Steve Sparks. Everything is good. That's what I was hoping to maintain. Pat Neshek, right hander, getting loose in the Astros pen as it's one and two now on Jake Marisnik. Leading off, he'll be followed by Jose Altuve and Preston Tucker. Here's Mr. Neshek. There's that breaking ball in the dirt and. It's not by the first time by any stretch tonight that guys have swung at that pitch. Remember that catch by Colby Rasmus? How could I forget? Big play. Wow. This might be a better angle of it. Turning to his left, spinning around, picking it back up. That's not easy to do. Some appreciation down there. That's the emotion in the dugout. You can really feel it with, with the sound and the sights there. And that's how invested these guys are in maintaining first place, maybe even stretching that lead in the American League West. Two and a half games up on the Angels. Altuve lines one to left field, but that's going to hang up for Brantley. And two down in the inning. No, there's a real good vibe in that dugout. Those guys believe on a nightly basis that they can go out there and win ball games whether it's early like we saw in the first game of the series or holding tight right here trying to make a late push to win these ball games these guys are not afraid they play all nine innings they believe in one another what's great is they've had some transition in that uh, in that roster and every guy that becomes a part of it is just welcomed right in Preston Tucker trying to maybe come up with a big two out swing Preston's one for three. Hit one about 45, 50 feet down the first base line for a base hit in the third inning. Kept it just inside the chalk. Says Trevor Bowers throwing 103 pitches, but he really doesn't look like a guy that has been real under control. We watched him warm up again today and he had some headphones on and uh, you know you were talking about how different he is in his approach. What are the headphones for example all about. Who's that motivational speaker. Uh, Tony Robbins. Oh that's what, what he goes after. Oh, I don't know. They sit through the right side second hit of the night for Preston Tucker as he waits nicely on the breaking ball. Come get a behind the scenes look at Minute Maid Park. Learn all about the ballpark by visiting areas like the historic Union Station, Luxury Suites, the Diamond Club, and much more. For more information, visit Astros.com slash tours or call 713-259-8996 to schedule your tour today. Pitching coach Mickey Calloway comes to the mound. And that would seem to indicate that they're just going to chat things over. We've got one more man to face. Carlos Correa come to the plate. He's 0 for 3 on the night, a couple of strikeouts. You know that the Astros are looking for Correa to find one big swing right here. 
come out of the funk and get your big swing. If you're wondering about the running game, Preston Tucker has not stolen a base this year. You know, we talked about Trevor Bauer. No, I don't listen. I don't know what he listens to on the uh, headphones. I'm sure he's got some kind of music going, but Callaway, their pitching coach, we talked about Bauer traveling all over the country to visit with some of these uh, more unique pitching schools or uh, pitching schools of thought. Mickey Callaway or Callaway has gone to these schools and listened to the same things, trying to adapt to a guy like Trevor Bauer. So I think that's a great thing for the Indians to do. But think about the message it sends to Trevor telling them or telling him that, you know, they want to be a part of what he's got going on. And again, they come in. Don't know what adjustments Carlos might be considering at this point, backing off a bit, trying to be quicker. A lot of things can come to mind. I really hope he doesn't adjust his swing because that's the tendency as yeah. a hitter is to try and adjust something in the swing. His swing is good, but I'm with you. Maybe move off the plate a little bit. Maybe try and clear that ball out of there, anticipate the ball inside, but I just, his swing is too pure for me to even think about trying to adjust anything to that. Breaking ball rammed down the left field side. But hooking and going foul. Now that's the kind of swing we've grown accustomed to with Carlos. And that's okay. That ball backed up a little bit. Yes, it was an off speed pitch on the inside corner, but able to clear it out of there. Just a fastball up and in on that first pitch. Came pretty close. I don't think there's any intention on that. That was just a cement mixer that got barreled up. Bauer wants to see the signs again. One and one the count. Tell you what, just take one pitch to ruin Trevor Bauer's night. Correa's the man to do it. He's overdue. Now this is where you want to be in the order. Fastball hit on the ground. Indians have an answer with Kipnis, and that'll do it. Two out hit by Preston Tucker. He's stranded. We've played seven and a half, a 2 2 game. Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare right now at southwest.com. And by Jack in the Box. Try the new double jack today. Only at Jack in the Box. That's looking kind of good right about now. Joe Patcher comes on. Will Harris did quite a job in the seventh inning with a couple of runners aboard. Nobody out. You got Brandon Moss, Giovanni Urshela, and Michael Bourne. And now it's the top of the order, left hand hitting Jason Kipnis to start it. I think Dan Shirley should be giving Will Harris a foot rub about right now. He did a great job at Thatcher on now to pick up that Astros bullpen. Didn't go so well yesterday or a couple days ago. 
Went a third of an inning, gave up a hit, earned run, two walks and a strikeout. Had to throw 23 pitches doing it. Luckily, it didn't have an effect on the outcome of the game. So it's Kipnis, Lindor, and Brantley here for the Indians. Kipnis has been the man with the bat for the tribe this year. Among the leaders all season long, 336 at batting average. Takes a strike. Like Brantley, you watch that front side and how easily Kipnis lands and no flinching on the front side. Thatcher gets in front, 0 2. That's a good sign. Head down on the baseball, Kipnis fouls it off. The Astros bullpen continues to be second best in the league. Kansas City has a bullpen with an ERA at 201. The Astros are second at 270. Baltimore close behind. Strike three, got him. Breaking ball up, little foul tip hung on to by Jason Castro. And there's your first out of the inning. Good start. Slowed him down with the slider before and then elevated the fastball and snuck it by him. It's almost a little bit of a cutter. One out for Francisco Lindor. 0 for 3 on the night. One of those outs, though, a ground ball in the first inning produced a run. That was right on the heels of the triple by Jason Kipnis. Seems like Joe Thatcher would have a tough time just getting on top of the baseball and throwing from that angle. So a little bit on the side creates that last little cut. Lindor in just his 22nd game, hitting 198. Hit down the line, that's in for a hit. Possible extra bases. Rasmus fires back to second. The dive and the tag, it's not in time. It's a one out double for Francisco Lindor. Not sure if he did it intentionally. That was a great play by Rasmus to get that ball in. Do you see how Tuve go aggressively at the hands of Lindor, maybe trying to push the hand off a little bit? As Lindor gets blown up that Thatcher fastball. But Cody, Cody Rasmus has been all over this outfield making some great plays. Watch the glove of Altuve with Lindor going in there. Puts a nice firm tag on him. May have tried to push him off a little bit. A.J. Hinch goes out to the mound. He wants the entire infield to come to the hill. So this is not about a pitching change. This is philosophy here and what they're going to try to do with Michael Brantley at the plate. Watch the glove. That left hand of Lindor is on Altuve. That was actually a really close play. Watch yeah. him follow through right here. You Leave know, that glove on there extra long. Maybe give it a little tug and you see the right hand of Lindor getting on there. And we've been seeing a number of plays <laughs> where guys have come off the bag after beating plays. And so I, part of that could be just simply trying to maintain a tag. I think it's a smart move. We've seen some of those plays overturned when slides go crazy and they get disengaged with the base. Looked like Lindor took a little umbrage at that tag. He'll get over it. Well, you hope it comes soon. 
Brantley is one for three. That one a base hit to lead off the fourth inning. He came around and scored the second Cleveland run. The Astros two runs back in the first inning. Two run dinger by Evan Gaddis. And now two and oh the count. Yes, you got it dead on dead on there. I saw a flinch, but I, I hadn't seen the umpire call timeout. In in my headset, I heard the field mic pick up Paul Nauer calling timeout. The hands from Paul Nauer behind home plate went up. Then the Bach was called. And that probably induced the flinch. Watch Brantley with the handoff. See, so he gets it right there, and then the Bach was called. Good job of the umpires picking each other up. 2 0 on Brantley. You know, if you had the inclination to try to steal for the man on second base, Joe Thatcher is very deliberate to the plate. You could pick up a number of steps before he released the ball. Just such a tough call with the left handed hitter Brantley up there. Good hitter in Brantley, but such an easy throwing lane for the catcher. It's a four pitch walk that'll put runners at first and second. One out for the four hitter, left hand hitting David Murphy. Walks create situations, and we've seen the Astros bullpen in this road trip create situations via the walk. Indians are 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position tonight. The Astros just 1 for 5. Pat Neshek would appear to be loose in the pen. Carlos Correa playing right in behind the runner. Deep to right field. Tucker going back at the wall. This is off the wall. Extra bases. Lindor scores. Brantley coming to the plate. Here's the throw from Altuve. Not in time. A two-run double from David Murphy. And the Indians jump on top here in the eighth inning. Four to two. Continuing his success against Astros pitching. Been a nemesis for years over there in Texas. Now he's here in Cleveland taking advantage of this slider right now from Joe Thatcher. Kind of interesting left on left with Joe Thatcher. He really doesn't have anything to back those left handed hitters off the plate. Therefore, it looked like Murphy kind of leaking out over the plate a little bit, letting those. Hands get out around that slider, yanking that one over the outstretched arm of Preston Tucker. Pretty impressive at bat. We'll be back shortly with the Indians on top, four to two.
Stay tuned after the game as the studio crew breaks down all the action from today's game. Plus interviews from the clubhouse and much more on the Astros postgame show presented by Houston Methodist. Pat Neshek on to work it now. But some big damage done here in the eighth inning. Two runs in for the Indians. They lead it four to two as Neshek will face the five hitter, the switch hitter, Carlos Santana. Good numbers on Neshek. That number on the bottom is a good one. Stranded 11 of 12 inherited runners. Murphy's double off Thatcher is the first extra base hit that Thatcher has given up all year to a left handed hitter. And the second double of the night for David Murphy, who's had a big game. So Thatcher came on, struck out Jason Kipnis to start the inning. But then the double by Lindor, the walk to Brantley, the double by Murphy, and the Indians right where they want to be now in the eighth. Off speed fouled back. Serious off speed at 67. It's a piece of Neshek and able to make the play, Carlos Correa. So it goes 1 6 3 on the put out of Santana. Moving into third is David Murphy. Neshek says, I'm okay. Thank goodness. This line drives back to the box. It's never fun to watch. Wow. Pretty good reaction that time was. for Neshek. You know you can't throw your glove at the baseball, but if the if the baseball takes the glove off, very oh, different. This would be a good view of it. Danger. Feet had left terra firma on that one. Two outs, man at third. Jan Gomes at the plate. Gomes 0 for 2. He's also been hit by a pitch. Not the kind of numbers the Indians anticipated getting from Gomes this year. The Indians hope they can turn their fortunes around in the second half. Looked like Gomes took a shot at that right side of the infield. Shift on. Yeah, he really let that ball travel, didn't he? The Indians are 10 games back behind Kansas City in the American League Central. So they've got a lot of ground to make up. But with a win tonight, they would be just four games under 500. And again, the Astros looking for win number 50 tonight. The 49 Houston wins most in the American League. Half swing going through his gomes, and that'll do it. Nishek comes on, settles things down, gets a couple of outs. But the damage done, two runs in. It's 4-2 Cleveland.
is off for the Houston Astros. He's our TXU Energy Power Player of the game earlier, putting the Astros up 2 nothing, taking a pitch up and out of the zone, sending it over towards the queue in left field to run bomb for him. That was his 15th on the year. But Evan Gaddis, we talked about him earlier in the game, how he's been having quality at bats, very consistent. His last 40 is hitting over 300. A.J. Hinch was talking about him, saying his approach is much more refined here lately. He's liking what he sees, especially when they shift against him. He's sending balls the other way. Uh, just a good approach for him. But we like to see him hit those high, high ones out of here, too, don't we, guys? Yeah, that's uh, never a bad sight. Yeah, it's a good approach when you're hitting pitches up above your eyes when it's going out of the ballpark. So, yeah. Cody Allen comes on to close it out. The closer for the Indians. Indians on top 4-2 here in the ninth. Fastball, curveball, changeup. Likes that curveball. Throws about 95 miles an hour. His last save was back on the third at Pittsburgh. Evan Gaddis, Colby Rasmus, and Chris Carter do up here in the inning. Fifteen home runs now for Evan. Tight breaking ball in the dirt. It's a ball and a strike. It's all about getting at least one base runner here. Especially for the Astros. They get a guy on as many home runs as they hit. Get that tying run to home plate. Harry gets his high fastball, 95 on that heater. Oakland plays at New York later on this evening. Let's see. Wow. That pitch was up, but Evan lays off. It's a good thing it wasn't over the plate. Yeah, you wonder, might he hack at it? Might. Oh, it, so it would have been a mighty hack. So you know, you, there's no question mark in that column for you, huh? Not anymore. High breaking ball. Evan stays alive. Three and two. It's not a good feeling as a hitter when you see a breaking ball get out of the hand of a pitcher like that, get it towards your head. How do you lay off that? Oh. You swing and miss, it hits you in the skull. Three two pitch. Fastball pumped right through there at 96 for the punch out. Ten strikeouts of Astros hitters. That's out number one. Probably Allen's got some good heat coming out of that right arm. Electric fastball. Big first out. Cody Allen gunning for his 17th save. The Astros trying to find a way to get something done here in the ninth. Rasmus fouls it to the seats. Well, the answers are hard to come by when the bats are cool. The Astros six hits on the night. The Indians just five. Again, the high heat. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Cody Allen racked up 24 saves last year. That 
42 saves already in four years of a brief career. Hit the air. Shallow and right. And now the right fielder Moss takes over. Two down in the inning. Base is empty as Chris Carter comes to the plate. Carter's 0 for 3 with a strikeout tonight. Popped up. This could do it. In foul territory, Santana puts it away. A 1 2 3 ninth for Cody Allen, his 17th save. And the Indians with two runs in the eighth inning. Able to win it in two hours and 39 minutes. The final 4-2.